Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Behind me, I got another flip car. It's another trailblazer. <laughs> These are what I call my bread and butter cars at this point. These are the things, you know, I can flip them quick. I know everything about these vehicles because I own one myself. I like them. Uh, and they're easy to sell in this area. 4x4, good powerful vehicles. People just like them. Uh, and this one's pretty clean. I picked this one up. It's an O2. It is very similar to another flip vehicle we have over here. The white one with the V8. Still working on this. Still dealing with some stuff on it. Um, it's essentially going to have to go to a dealership. Get the ECU flash. You'll see more in uh, upcoming videos on it. But this one is what we're talking about today. It is an O2. It has the inline six, not the V8. Unfortunately, this truck would be amazing if it had the V8. But it's got 4x4, towing package, uh, trailer brake, aftermarket head unit. It's got a lot of stuff. Main reason I got this thing, I paid a little bit more than what I normally pay for vehicles. That's why I got this thing. Current inspection. That's good for another like four months right now. Yeah, four months we got on this with inspection. Frames clean. Good tires all around. Nice little all terrains. Uh, they're kind of, you know, cheaper brand, but still all terrains with good treads, uh, that are not that old. They're 2021 date code. Um, and she's pretty rust free. I say pretty rust free. Obviously a little bit of rust starting on the doors where it always does. Um, and there's a little bit of rust in the dog leg over here. See a, a little bubble starting there, but this dog leg back here is the main reason. And I believe that's why they have the fender liner out from in there. I don't know what the previous owner was doing to try to fix the rust, but yeah, you can see just there. That's the only real bad spot of rust on this thing. Other than that, it is a really solid, good looking vehicle. Inside obviously needs a good cleaning. There's that radio, aftermarket radio that comes with it. it needs to be hooked up still. But other than getting that radio hooked up and cleaning this interior, this thing's pretty much set on the inside. Oh, and some interior trim plastics and stuff like that that need to be set up at the door. All those door handle bezels always pop out, so we'll get those on. But the seats are in good shape. It's an LTZ, so it's got leather. It's got heated seats, which are awesome. Uh, dual zone climate control, leather wrap steering wheel with controls on it. The headrests with TVs are aftermarket. They hook up to that radio and they do work, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's the inline six. Hop up the hood for you guys now. And it's pretty clean. I'm just excited. Uh, not much work is gonna have to go into this one. That's why I paid a little bit more once again. Just gotta get some shocks on it. Pretty much everything that needs to be done is gonna happen in this video, like the Corolla video. Uh, so, should be a good little flip video for you guys. And yeah, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. Here's under the hood, once again, going with the trend of this truck, very clean. This engine has been maintained really well. Um, only thing I don't really like is some wiring that's been put in for like a subwoofer and aftermarket amp. I mean, if someone wants to buy it and put one in, it's already wired up and ready. I just don't like, I don't like other people's wiring jobs. I never like messing with that. But it, it was one thing, it was small. Uh, looks like they've done it pretty right as far as the wiring goes. I don't really like the exposed wires, but it is what it is, and I'm going to make sure it's safe before we get that moved on to the customer, whoever ends up buying this off of me. You can see, though, these struts have seen better days. Those strut toppers are really rusty. Um, and she pops a little bit when she hits bumps. Uh, and the struts are original. It's still the factory struts, and this thing's got 170,000 miles on it. So it's just time. You can see these rear ones. It's the original yellow bill sheens that these came with from the factory. You can get a look underneath this thing here. You can see it's got its surface rust. It definitely has been a Williamsport vehicle its whole life, um, which doesn't surprise me. People love these trailblazers around here. But yeah, it's not completely rotted out yet, which is perfect. It's got a lot of life ahead of it. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of work to it here, get it detailed up, looking good, and pass it on to its next owner. All right, so I'll show you all the parts we got here for it. I did a junkyard run over the weekend and got everything I need. These are not for it, that's old parts from the white one. Got this little door trim, it needs that in the rear. It needs this little latch for the rear cargo area. 
Fog lights, the ones on it are really foggy. These need to be polished up, but they'll work. Door trim bezel. This one's for the white trailblazer because I ended up messing up its door trim bezel while trying to get one, a replacement for the blue one. Uh, new center console armrest. The one that's in it is pretty dingy and also the plastic underneath is broken. So when you press on that, it just goes straight through. So little convenience things to make it feel really nice on the inside. And then I've got the struts in the house. I'll go show you those now. All right, coming in the living room now, we've got some parts. We always have parts stacking up over here by the front door. Uh, these are rain guards, rain deflectors. I don't know what you call them, the little plastic things you can put on windows. Um, the one side had some cracked ones, and I like the way it looks with the rain guards on it. Really, really makes it look better with the tinted windows it's got, which are really nice. Um, so we're going to replace all of them with these and then just take the ones from the other side and keep them as spares. We got just, just some basic um, Monroe struts here. We got the rears, the fronts. A little bit of a downgrade from the bill sheens they come with from factory, but considering that the shocks that are in it are so bad they barely even function, big upgrade. It'll definitely start riding smoother and feel good for whoever test drives it. All right, so while we're here, I'm just gonna throw some of these interior parts on. You can see this. The little memory seats just clip right on. Okay, so yeah, these just clip right on here. You can see those clips are what always break. Um, and I'm gonna have to do this with two hands because this door card's falling apart. So I gotta push it all back together and then push that in there. Because these essentially hold the door cards together, or the upper door card at least. All right, so here's the old center console off, and you can even hear there's stuff loose in there, and you can see it just presses straight down. This one is not exactly the same color, but, I mean, it's the same color scheme interior. I, I guess you could either option them with a dark lid or a light lid to match whatever two-tone you want, but it still works. It's the same color, um, same color as the rest of in the interior. And you just do these three seven millimeter bolts and you can replace the lid. A lot of times what happens with these lids are those little pegs will break off and then they pop open. Uh, these are good though. The peg was good on this one so I'll keep it as a parts, parts piece. Um, and then that new one looks good on there. Just need to be cleaned like the rest of this interior. So here's something else I want to do today while I'm in here. You can see the little tab for that side broke off and this one's pretty busted too. So it kind of just was flopping around in the mount over there and since everything's already open up for the radio I uh, figure might as well do this I had had one line around that works uh, just because I always have a stockpile of these because they're worth money I like to sell them a lot and they're when they're in working condition they're just good things to have around if you work on GM cars uh, trucks primarily because every single GM truck that had automatic climate control had that uh, up until like 2007 uh, so anyway, that is one of the perks to um, buying and selling the same type of vehicle and like have it stick into a type of vehicle. Not to say that I don't buy and sell other stuff, obviously. Got the Corolla in there. I have a, I, I'm into all types of cars, but it's nice when you're working on stuff like this because if you got parts around, you don't have to go make a trip or buy any more. All right, coming around back now. Another thing I forgot to show you guys is a backup camera. All this stuff is hooked up and ready for the radio once I get the radio hooked up. There's the uh, cord for the subs, the amps back here. I don't know what you call them. I've never really done audio on vehicles. Um, back here, the plastics are all pretty good. Uh, only thing I gotta replace is that little pool tab thing. Yeah, this is locked right now, too, so that's gonna be really fun trying to I'm just gonna pop it out. All right, so this is a little piece that covers the little cargo area down there, the stash area. Um, and then that's the little tab thing. You see the little pull tab is just broken right off. So you literally just put a flat head back there and you can pop this whole unit out, put the other unit in, and it's good to go. And then the other thing we gotta do back here is if you didn't see before, this trim piece. A lot of trim pieces are broken from the wiring when this guy, previous owner, decided to put in all this aftermarket wiring, like the backup camera, these, the radio. Um, he broke some tabs and broke some of the trim pieces, but junkyard, plenty of trim pieces in the junkyards for these things. 
All right, coming to this side now, I gotta pop this clip out. Luckily, it's got the other clip because we're missing that one here. And we'll just throw it in there. For this rust being here, I'm looking at these rocker panels here. They're clean. This is relatively rust free for being upstate in Pennsylvania. All right, and there we go, just like that. This thing's looking a bit more complete on the interior. Obviously, the interior is not perfect on this thing. It's gonna look really good once detailed though, which is what matters. All right, now I'm gonna tackle a couple of small things on the outside. We're gonna get these old wind deflectors off or rain deflectors off, put the new ones on, and uh, put the wheel well cover in here because for some reason it's missing. So for this, it literally just clips around the edge here. So those screws there. And then you go up, and there's some back there that I'm going to have to just get some grommets for. Um, and then a screw down there, which I'm going to have to snag off the other trailblazer. Um, so yeah, just pop those in. There it is right there. I just got to get the grommet, and it'll be good to go. Alright, so got that in there. Like I said, I just used some Harbor Freight like push-in grommets. And then the screws that were already there, the big screw down there, unfortunately, uh, the old one snapped in there, so not going to put a new one of those in. But yeah, this little Pittsburgh fastener kit, 14 bucks. I use it for everything. It's awesome. But yeah, that's done. Let's get these wind deflectors done. And uh, yeah, next time we work on this, we'll do the struts. All right, there we go. We got all the side deflectors off. I'm going to take this banana wheel around and get all the adhesive off. This side, I almost was able to save, but unfortunately, you know how it is getting these things off, especially in the winter time. Today's not really too cold, but it's still chilly out. They're very fragile. But here's the new ones. We're gonna get this old adhesive off, wipe it down with like some panel spray, prep wipe, make sure that there's nothing, uh, nothing to keep it from sticking there, and yeah, put the new ones on. You can see just how easily this banana wheel eats up this stuff. Throws it everywhere, makes a bit of a mess, but other than that, it works great. All right, there she is with that new nice side profile. Those are some good looking rain deflectors right there. And we got the other sides matching. There we go. Now, last thing I'm gonna do here quickly, you can see I got the fog lights out. I'm gonna replace it with some less dingy looking fog lights and those headlights should buff up pretty well too um, but yeah i got some fog lights like the ones in that trailblazer that are nice and bright still um, we'll throw those in and really update the look of this thing just gave these a nice polish and you can see how nicely they clean up there's one that still needs to get polished that's the front one we did so far these are gonna look good all right we got those new fog lights in polished up the headlights quickly by hand just for good measure this thing's looking much better. Next up, to get those struts in. All right, we're back out here today with the blue trailblazer. As I said, uh, it's the next week. I'm gonna put on the struts this week and get it listed this week. Um, so we got the back jacked up right now. You can see those old struts. As I jacked it up, these struts literally were creaking as they like extended down. They're so bad, They're, they definitely are part of the clunk back here. Like I said before, it might also need the sway bar end links. We're gonna see how much these new oh, um, Monroe struts are gonna take away the, the popping sound in the back, or the clunking sound, I should say. Let's see if I can do this one-handed, show you guys what these things are gonna look like. There we go. Your typical Monroe strut not going to look as cool as the yellow bill sheens that are on here but it'll be a close second but anyway um how to do these struts on these trailblazers i'll show you it's really easy it's like any any typical rear shock absorber you got to bolt up there bolt down there i believe there are 15 mils on these don't quote me on that it's been a while since i did them on my trail my gray trailblazer uh put a wrench on one side impact on the other and you can get them out um, took me about 15 minutes to do on my gray trailblazer but then again that one's babied and not really rusty at all underneath this one could take a bit more another thing I figured out the radio 
with this. I ended up not wiring up the old or the uh, aftermarket radio. I just put in one of a stock radio that was sitting around. You see it's still flashing the security light and it actually is locked. Uh, later this week I'll have to go take this to uh, Penn College. Uh, since I go to college there I can use their scan tools and those some of those nice modus scan tools the ten thousand dollar snap on ones those uh, can clear radio lock codes uh, and if not there there's tips and tricks uh, you can pull a certain chip on the motherboard and it just wipes out the locking feature but that also loses radio the function of radio presets and being able to save stations so ideally I'd like to keep that and just try to go about it with the scanner but yeah we definitely I, it does turn on when you turn on the vehicle. See if I can get the keys here and show you. So, I know that's gonna work. Hopefully, hopefully the speakers are good in this thing. That's the one risk I took with like nev never hearing the radio. But yeah, so it's ready. It's ready, I just have to unlock it. But anyway, today we're working on the struts. So later this week, we can get it detailed and listed. All right, you can see there the difference between these struts. That definitely was overdue. Look at how extended that is. It's not even somewhat compressed. I bet you, yeah, even standing on it, it does not want to go down. Barely. And it kind of just stays. So, garbage. Gonna put these new ones in. We got, you see, these are the bolts here. Just two bolts, like I said. They were 18 millimeters, not 15s. Um, and yeah. Other thing is, if you're going to do this, you got to have a jack on the pumpkin. This, These pumpkins actually come with a little spot just for the jack. That little thing right there is just to jack up. So I got one side out, going to get the other side, pop these new ones in, and she's good to go. There we go. We got two new Monroe shocks in the back. Obviously, you can tell they're new. They're way less crusty than the rest of this. But hey, this thing's crusty, but not rusty. It's just got... Got a little bit of surface rust, no rot. But yeah, definitely the back should not be clunking anymore. If it is, I'm gonna have to look into doing those sway bar end links. I got a box of them over there, so I'm not too worried about like getting into it, but just something I'm hoping I don't have to do. Tomorrow I'm gonna be messing with these front shocks. Uh, they, they obviously are a bit harder than the rears. They take a bit longer to get done if you're doing them. All right, like I said, we're gonna tackle this front suspension now. Uh, this is my first time taking the wheels off here um, on this Trailblazer and getting to see up front uh, with all this suspension. Most of it looks pretty good. The strut obviously is really rusty and needing to be replaced. These sway bar end links though, however, on the front, they seem pretty tight. So if I can get away with just putting the rear ones on, that might be good. Um, obviously replacing impairs on both sides of the rear, but if both fronts are good and tight, we'll leave them be. So I only have to buy two more sway bar end links for this one, which is what really needed it. But it's all good. As long as this thing's driving good and without clunks in the end, I'm happy. But look at the brakes. Apparently, right before I got it, someone had just put a new caliper, hopefully on both sides. Um, and the rotors are pretty new and the pads have a lot of life left to them. With, these suspen with the suspension in these, obviously you got to get the top bolts off. But then you also have to get this middle bolt here so you can drop this whole this whole piece down. And then there's another bolt there, there, and well that, that last bolt in the middle there you take off when you have the little strut assembly out and you gotta knock that little arm off then. Which I'll show you guys once once I have it apart. Alright, so you can see here we got pretty much all the bolts we're gonna need to undo, apart from that middle bolt that's on the assembly still. Got the one bolt out up here, it's a 15. You're gonna have to put a wrench on one end because it's a bolt nut type situation. So get that out. Then the ones up top are 18s, two 18s, right up in there. The one you gotta kind of squeeze past the uh, brake fluid reservoir. Sorry, it's a little dark, a lot of shadows in the engine bay. Uh, and then down here on the very bottom is a huge bolt, 24 millimeter. And yeah, there she is. Gonna whack, you gotta whack up here to get this to pop off the ball joint, and then I should be able to squeeze the assembly out. So I'm gonna do that now, and then show you guys the assembly. 
All right, so you see, I tapped that out. We now have this free floating around. Um, we got that there. Well, after quite the ordeal, you can see we got her out. Here it is over here. So now I gotta break loose that bolt, which is another 15. And you can see it's got a little spot to put a pry bar in there or something to pry that apart. You do that, whack that little arm out, and then put the new strut in and reinstall. So a quick tip for getting this thing off, because it, especially up in the rust belt, this is terrible. But you take a pry bar, crowbar, something you can stick in there, uh, and then you get it to the top and you just wiggle it. You take the two, the little uh, arm thing that's on there, and the uh, pry bar, crowbar, whatever you want to call it, and you just wiggle it off. Once you get that in there, it'll be loose enough to get off if you get in far enough. All right, so you guys saw how this one looked on that mount. Now we got a nice new one. Got the mount back up. It's a lot easier bumping that mount in than taking it out. Um, a lot easier to hammer it on than to hammer it off. There we go. Brand new Monroe Quick Strut. Out with that old crappy rusty GM strut. Obviously, same procedure, just backwards to reinstall. So I'm going to button this side up, get the other side done, and then I don't know if I'm going to get to the rear sway bar end links tonight or not, but sometime this weekend I will. And there we have it. After a little bit of struggle caused by the uh, amazing factor that we're in the rust belt, she's on. Like I said, I'm going to get the other side done, and we'll see if we still have time to do those sway bar end links tonight. All right, so you can see in there we got the sway bar end link in. We got both of them in. Um, you can see it is quite the ordeal. But we did both the rear ones. She doesn't clunk or make noise anymore. Like the old ones were really, they really would shake if you vibrated them, like shook them around in your hand. Um, I would love to have shown you, but unfortunately I had to cut them up to get them out. That's why it's such a process to do this. Uh, typically what's going to happen is the whole unit, since it's a ball joint, will spin when you're trying to undo it. It's two 18 millimeters, by the way. Uh, got to use a ratchet to get to the one behind. I just use the impact and then that open-ended wrench to install them. Now taking them out, half the time this open-ended wrench just strips out and then you're stuck with nothing. So you just got to cut them off. It's unfortunate. It adds a lot of time to the task, but it's what you got to do. We've done it. Let's take it for a test drive, see how it rides now. Should ride like new. And then, yeah, I'll be back here after I take a test drive. Note how I had to grind off that side because it wouldn't come out. Annoying little buggers, but they cause a lot of noise and can be fixed if you want to. All right, a little something I want to add in here to the Trailblazer video. We're out here at a U-Pullet yard. As you can see, it's shit weather today. Thunderstorms have been rolling through hail. We're probably going to have to hide in something here shortly. Look at that, fear. This yard is our first time coming here. It's Clemens Auto Salvage in, what is this, Watson Town, Pennsylvania. Look at that view. Damn, look at that, uh, that Malibu wagon. But yeah, so we're out here. We're looking for, I need a radio for that trailblazer. Um, and we're just going to find all these things. Holy shit. All right, yeah, we're going to find a car to sit in find a trailblazer hopefully so I can get that radio and I'll be back with you here or that bus all right so coming out back here we got some GM SUVs as you see oh some more cars too interesting layout here they have such a weird variety though and they have some really cool stuff so far I'm seeing but uh yeah I'm gonna come out back here and I think there should be a trailblazer or two look at this thing I love the original color combo, and I, I like the blue and gray too, but look at that. Nice. All right, so we got something we need. Uh, this mirror I'm getting for my roommate. He needs it for his truck. Yeah, you can see this is all SUVs and stuff out here. A lot of Chevy. So we're gonna hop in this truck now, stay out of the rain, and get this mirror first things first. All right, so it's three 10 millimeter bolts on the inside, and it kind of just slides out. Might have to do it two handed. There we go. And then I just got to figure out this wiring. I think. Yeah, there it is right there. You just undo this wire and the mirror's yours. All right, so we got some more stuff back here. This looks like it turns to Ford back here. Yeah, Ford and some more foreign cars and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to come up through here. 
keep doing these Chevy rows. Hopefully find a radio. I found one, but uh, it's a newer style. Here's a trailblazer up here. Let's go see what this has in it. I also don't want to take it, although this one's got windows open. And I don't really want to take it from something that's got windows open. Just because it could have gotten wet. Yeah, this radio is pretty neat. So keep it moving. Find another one. So here's another trailblazer. This one's got a good looking radio, but like, once again, the door is just wide open. Like it's pretty beat in there. I think I'm pretty much almost done with the Chevys in this spot is what it looks like. I have no idea. There's no like rhyme or reason to this yard and how it's organized. So I'm probably just gonna go try to find Silva. I gotta come back here anyway for that uh, mirror we got over there. So if I don't find anything else, I guess I'm gonna be forced to take it from one of these Look at this thing. A couple of rare cars right here. Rare for the day. Two-door convertible Kia Sportage. These were essentially just Geo trackers. And then an old 4Runner. Stripped. But I also see a couple Trailblazers. So going to look in these to figure out where I'm getting my radio from. It's not going to be that one. Look at those buttons peeling out. Here's an Envoy right there. I'll go look at that. Oh, another Trailblazer. Okay. All right, so there's a couple things back here. Definitely not going to take it from this one. This one might be a solid contender right here. This looks to be a later model. Doesn't have its grill or headlights, so I can't tell, but definitely looks like a later model. Just by the design. Looks a lot like my 07. And we got a radio. Might go with that. That could be a that could be a good one right there. All right, so we got the radio. Looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I took off the little power knob thing because it was really all it was pretty much all peeled off. So I'm just gonna go find another one from one of these other radios around here. Swap it on, and that'll be a good radio. So explain this. These are brand new Outbacks. Now I'm assuming here it was probably something to do with like a total loss or I don't think they were test mules because they were set up ready to go to the dealership plastic on the seats plastic on a lot of stuff now they're just here yeah a lot of money and parts on these things and it looks like they just brought them in and crushed them but the motor's still on that one it's kind of crazy these are all brand new motors just rotting away here but yeah this is Towards the front, I'm just looking around here. I got everything I need. We're just gonna take a quick look around and then probably head out of here. All right, so like I said, last part of the video here on the Blue Trailblazer, last part of the flip process is to detail it. Uh, I'm gonna show you today, you guys have obviously seen the before pictures. I'm gonna show you the process today that I take to detail all my cars, get them looking good for photos um, and get them looking good and feeling good on the test drive. Uh, so I'll show you the after now. All right, so I'm actually gonna pull this thing out because it's a nice day today. I'm gonna start the detail outside at least. Don't know how much I'll get finished outside before it gets dark, but might as well get a little bit done out in the nice sun um, so the, I can see everything and so it's nicer and I'm not as cold. Um, and then we'll just bring it in here to finish it up. Let's give it a little bit of a cold start. Hasn't been starting the last couple of days. Fires right up. Look at that. Got the radio going now. Ice possible. Yeah, it's chilly out today. Yeah, she did that no problem though. All right, so here's one last look at the before. Uh, already hit up the door jams and all that. Uh, did that when I was washing the vehicle. But here we go. Seats are in pretty good shape. They'll just need a quick wipe down. Carpets are going to be the majority of this job. Um, and then center console is pretty disgusting as well But get all that figured out door cards too are pretty pretty gross The rear is better. There's some floor mats back here. That'll need to be pressure washed The seats are in such great shape back here. The leather looks like it's really not even been used Headliners in good shape A lot of smoke smell it's gonna have to come out, but we'll run the ozone machine after all this tonight after we've extracted and everything Get all this gravel out back here. This is all gonna have to get extracted. Pretty much all the carpets are gonna have to get extracted. 
yeah, like all that. But you can see the door jams look really good. And the exterior of the car looks okay. We'll have to definitely paint correct it, as you can see there. Up here, this is the worst carpet out of all of them. It's all matted down. Hopefully, I'll be able to somewhat bring that back. But I'm going to quickly, right now, just dress up under the hood, make that look all nice and shiny. And then, uh, then we'll get to vacuuming, dusting out all the crevices, and then extracting. The hope is that I can get the extracting process done and have this thing back in the garage tonight, drying off, uh, ozone machine running, and then I'll deal with the other little things on the interior tomorrow and paint correct it tomorrow and hopefully get pictures of it tomorrow. All right, here's under the hood. Now that's been all shined up and cleaned. Definitely looks a lot better than just a dirty, mud-covered engine bay. Looks a lot more well taken care of. Just looks like a cleaner motor, which it is. It's a really good, good motor. All right, so the only floor mats this vehicle happens to have are the rear ones. So we're gonna pressure wash them and then extract them. And while the pressure wash is out, I'm gonna pressure wash some of these cup holder inserts and all that, because they're disgusting. All right, here they are after just being pressure washed. I put some solution on them. I'm about to hit them with the drill brush now. Now I'll blast them again with the pressure washer, hit them with the extractor, and they should be good. I'm gonna show you the little inserts here. They were covered in slime and gunk. Just pressure wash them out, wipe them down. They're good to go. So I'm gonna hit this now. I have a little extension notice on my drill. I learned, it, unless you do that, water gets all over your battery, and that's not good. You can see the difference now that these have been extracted. More of a uniform color, not a dark gray. And they'll get lighter as uh, as they dry more. They're still pretty damp. Uh, they will feel some sort of weather today as the wind is blowing around. But I'm gonna get the vacuum out now, vacuum this entire thing out, and then from there, do the same extraction process we just did, but on these floors. All right, as you can see, these floors have turned out a lot nicer. It's crazy what just a vacuum does to a vehicle. Um, I've always said this, the quickest way to make your vehicle look better on the inside, just give it a vacuum. Now, we're gonna tackle these stains in the carpet. Um, I'm not as much worried about them in the back. They're not as bad as them in the back as in the front, especially at driver's side. Um, with the smoke smell, I believe most of it's coming from this passenger footwell, a little bit on the driver's side too, but this is where most of the smoke smell is coming from, so I definitely have to make sure I get out all the extra all the stains, extract everything I can before I run the ozone machine. I'll show you the back here. The back, I think I'm just going to leave the way it is. It turned out really good with just a vacuum. There's a couple miscellaneous stains and stuff like that, but nothing that I think would really stop a sale. Uh, therefore, it's not really worth the extra time because time is money. So anyway, I'm going to move on to the extraction now. Start with probably the back, move to the front, and I'll show you when I'm done with that. All right, so here we go. We got some more progress. Floor mats are still, or the floors are still pretty wet. You can see that. That's pretty damp, but much cleaner than before. Once that dries, it should be about the same as that gray there that you see. Difference between wet and dry. Got the floor mats back in on the back. Started with the back first so it would dry up soonest. So I could get those back in. I didn't like them. They were getting all folded and contorted on those banisters that I had them drying on. All that orange rust-like stains that were over here, gone. Got that mat back in there. She's looking good. The driver's side, the worst part. Still really worn down in some sections just from all the use, but overall, all the stains got sucked out. It's still damp too, that's the other thing you gotta keep in mind. But everything got sucked out, including that smoke smell. Um, that was the biggest reason I needed to stain, or needed to stain extract this, was to get that smell out. So now with that out, I can go to cleaning these seats, windows, dashboard, all the trim pieces. All that nitty gritty stuff and this interior is done and tomorrow I can paint correct it and get some photos. It's just about that time that it'll be too dark to keep detailing but I just did all the glass and the screens in this thing. These rear TV screens, all the glass, even out back. 
windshield, mirror, rear view mirror, I mean. Little sun visor mirrors too. Yeah, this black, all the black tint looks so good now. Yeah, just, oh, and the gauge cluster too, look at that. Looks like a nice new vehicle. These are all the things people like to see when they test drive it. So, I'm just going to continue here, get a couple more things done before it gets too dark. Park it in there and continue tomorrow. Alright, well, got a little bit of a surprise weather attack here from some snow. Uh, but, as you can see, garage doors are open over there and I am ready to get started doing that paint correction. I'm hoping I'll be able to get that fully done today before I have to get to work on that CRV for a client. Um, and yeah, if I can get it done today, I'll try to get some pictures once it stops flurrying and raining here. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get some good pictures of it, get it listed today. All right, so I'm talking about paint correction. This is what I'm talking about. All those swirls and scratches in that paint, I really wouldn't, I, I would love to get rid of all of them. If I can reduce them just a little bit, Obviously, some of the ones like in here from people grabbing that door handle, they're pretty deep. They'll be in there for good. These little nicks in the paint suck, but it is what it is. As long as I can get this paint popping and looking good in photos, that's my goal here. The hood, you can really see it's beat up, but it'll definitely have, it can have some shine come back to it, and that's really the goal here because this blue is such an awesome color. Another thing that told me this is going to polish up good, um, is when it was wet it looked really nice and sleek and just that's the look we're going to get after the wax job here and you can really tell the difference between blue paints here here's my jeep this has clear coat peel on the hood which i'll be dealing with this summer but that would not get buffed little scratches and surface stuff like this absolutely could get buffed out all right look at that difference look at how nice and dark blue it is compared to over here Deep finish. Looks nice and slick and wet. No scratches like this. Much better. Alright, let's do this to the rest of the truck now. Alright, so a couple hours later we have a whole side done. So it took about it took about an hour and a half to do that, so a three hour job total once I'm done the other side. I'll try to show you this headlight here. That really shined up nicely. That's what we like to see. The hood, obviously, you had seen that already. The fender, the doors. Look how much shine and depth there is to the paint now. I love navy blue paint. It just, it gets so scratched up and shows every blemish. But, man, this black, black and navy, really looks sleek on this vehicle. That's what's going to sell it. The tailgate here. Had a bunch of swirls in it as well. That's all buffed out. I just gotta get this other side now, and then we're good to go. And if anyone's curious what I'm using here, just Ultimate Compound, random orbital polisher, that has adjustable speeds, and I would just do a cross hatch pattern. Some of these I've had to do multiple passes on, like the rear door there, um, and the tailgate, the hood, I had to do multiple passes on to get it looking like this, but, some doors, like this door, I really only had to do one pass. Uh, maybe I was just a bit more aggressive with that door than this door, but yeah, anyway, always do the cross hatch pattern though. That really is what agitates and gets the swirls to buff out. All right, here it is, final look here. Of course, it started raining the second I pulled it back out because it's been raining all day today. Can't get a break. But it is what it is. Just got some really good pictures for all the listings. She looks really good. Ended up shining up all the black plastic. Got the tires looking good. The paint, obviously. Look how the water's beating up on that. Much better than before. And then inside, inside I'll show you everything as well. I'm not going to keep the doors open for too long just because of the rain, but look how these seats turned out. Much better. Dashboard. All that. Center console. Look at that center console. It was filthy before. And I found a little piece to 
glue back on there. So looks really good now. These rear seats are my favorite part. They look brand new. That leather is just beautiful. The floors all extracted, looking good. This thing is ready. The door cards. Out back, you've already seen it out back here, but there it is again. Looks good back there. Show you this side. Leaving the headrests in here, leaving the backup camera, leaving all those little options that the previous owner put on with the aftermarket radio. Only thing I'm not including is that aftermarket radio. Passenger side, even the passenger side seat, like it's in great shape. Barely looks used. The dashboard again. Headliner. Yeah, it looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to get it listed now, get some pictures put up on the detailing page for it. And yeah, that is all for this video. If you guys enjoyed watching this process and seeing me take an old beat up farm trailblazer pretty much and turning it into a nice first vehicle for a kid, I don't know what it's going to become, probably a first vehicle or someone's like backup or winter beater, um, maybe even a trail build. Someone could honestly do a little overland build with this thing. It's already got some pretty nice tires on it. Um, and they're very capable off-road. Also, it could be a great towing, towing rig. I mean, it's got the tow package on it from factory. And then it was, it had the trailer brake added, which, and the trailer brake still works. Let's see. Press down or in. And that turns on. It also turns on automatically each time you press the actual brake pedal. And you can adjust it too. And yeah, so this thing's ready to go. All right, one more thing I'm going to add into the video here because I didn't think it was going to sell as quickly as it did, to be honest. Uh, I just sold this thing. Uh, just brought it back here quickly. I'm waiting for my client to drop her fiance off at work, and then she's gonna then she's gonna go meet me at the notary, and I'm gonna actually do a delivery on this to her house, drop it off for her since she's right here in town. So yeah, quick sale. I listed it yesterday night around like eight o'clock at night. Got a bunch of offers and messages instantly. A lot of it bullshit from Facebook, but eventually found these spires. They need to upgrade from a Camry. They need something bigger. They've got uh, two twins and now another kid on the way this is the perfect vehicle for them uh, I'm sure they'll love it uh, I'm sure they'll take good care of it I hope they do um, and yeah I'm just glad to see it going so quickly and going to such a good home and for anyone who's wondering what I have into this total I'm in it just under two thousand dollars at nineteen nineteen hundred and sixty dollars so yeah uh, not a bad profit uh, sold it for 35 so about 1500 in profit. Can't complain. Anyway, like I said before, if you guys like the, the video and want to see more like this, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe so you never miss out, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.